ayang uh, Veronica Dobson, ayang uh, Ginger Porter Rinya. I'm Veronica Parola Dobson. I uh, lived at uh, Santa Teresa, Ginger Porter, and my people worked around that area on cattle stations and we normally always used to go back onto homeland and hunt and gather bush foods and live on that as well as a bit of ration that was given to my family. Southeast, no weather and it's Ginger Porter, Bandung, Yelkati, Noranga, Uyitja. Lambie Station is named after my grandfather. He was a rainmaker. That's Orlamba. Aboriginal uh, people of the desert, that's how they perceive their stories, their dances, body paintings, everything to do with country. This is Aljara. Mara, Churjurupala, meaning the Aboriginal people, and plants, foods, and everything to do with what we use on the land. So this is the creation time, this is the land, this is the people of the land, and this is the foods and the actual plants of the land, a lagan. It's actually a law that we abided by, like the town laws, you know, like city laws and that. This is what we abided by, the kin and skin group. And this is how we perceive how we fit into the land, everything to do with the land, the sky, the underground things and also the sites, the waters, um, everything to do with it. And the main one we're talking about now is the agagi. It's a fruit that's got a dreaming and relate, relate to people and also it's a sacred tree and it's a totem to different people. And People have to respect the tree when they uh, pick the fruit. This is agagi, the actual leaf of the agagi. There's kin and skin, there's the code of conduct, the law, the ceremony rituals, the body designs, and also painting and also dance and songs and of course st story species and also the actual um, spirit people and ancestors. This is the actual uh, bush current plant and this is an important plant to our people. It's uh, Aljara from the creation time. This plant is very important and uh, it needs to be respected. When you're picking fruit off the actual tree as well, you don't break any limbs because it's a totem to some of the people, Aranda people also, and Majiralyawara people. And uh, there was a couple of women that wanted to use it to cook in a cake and they were told that they couldn't do it because of the actual importance of the plant to our people. And now we're talking about the kajara. It's the bush raisin. And there is a totem and stories to that plant as well. So, burning water places, sky underground, seasons, habitat, animals, plants, 
and also sites and tracks. These green ones you don't eat and they turn a yellow colour that's called Allah and when they dry it out like this you pick them and eat them as well. Also what people used to do is pick them and then pound them and make them into a, a, a cake type thing and eat it as well. The Akajaras and the, these are what they are. And of course the actual Akajara is a totem to some people. Some people have got that as a totem and they respect that plant and you know people like to sort of make sure that the Akajara tend to grow when they need it to grow and sometimes it needs burning so people burn the actual spinifex and it burns the actual Akajaras as well that makes it grow a lot better so it brings back you know, turkey, emu to eat it and then they eat the actual source of the uh, meat from the turkey or the emu and they also eat the actual uh, kajira as well, the people because it's a fruit that they like eating. They won't burn when it's windy like this. They wait until it was, you know, still and the right time to actually burn the country and it was the actual owner of the country and also the manager that did it. Now I'm talking about Yalka this time. The Yalka. That's connected to all these as well and, and that's their totem and it's respected food. And um, it, when pe people dig it they have to do it with respect, they have to pound the actual area with a rock rather than dig it with a stick in respect of the people that own that totem and of course there's other things that connects with it. That's the uh, custodians and owners and managers and history, individual and family. And this one here is food and medicine. The other one is uh, plants named. And of course there's the um, harvesting rules. And that's really strict. You can't go and dig it with a stick. You have to get a rock and pound the actual area where the yalkas are and dig it that way because of the rules of uh, how people collect and uh, knowledge and learning giving handing down knowledge to young people from the old people and the people that come from the totem of this plant and also trade People used to trade, you know, certain uh, foods like yelkas for other, maybe ochre or maybe other foods or even tobacco, the wild tobacco that grows and of course that's gathering and preparing work. But not when they're green, you never dig them when they're green. You have to wait until the actual top rugs dies off and they dry out like that that's the yoka and you grind them up for people that got no teeth or babies and young children make it into a ball and give it to them to eat a lot of the uh, buffalo grass growing here as you can see and along the river banks there used to be a lot of yokas growing and a lot of the yelkas have disappeared from around these areas. The buffalo grass has taken over and also other plants like the pencil yam, the bulb bill of vegetables that was collected by my people with the yelkas and they've all gone now.
because of the buffalo grass and also cooch. And a lot of the young people are not knowing any of this information. And it's good to sort of hand down their knowledge to the young people so that respect the tree and know that it's an important plan to our people. This is the El Kajira, and it's Ndanga that was collected and eaten by my people. And uh, it's called dead finish. The seeds are a food source for people and also for birds. Birds eat them when they're green, not when they're dried out like this. This is when my people collect them to make flour out of it. And when you keep doing that, the, only the seeds are left, all the husk is blown away. And that's the seeds. This is the rangui, the bush plum. It's like an olive, it hasn't got much uh, flesh on it, but it's got a big seed. And that was eaten by my people. The tree is called a para, and a paralya is the name that comes from the red river gum. It's sweet, not as sweet as what the sugar is, but this is what we was used to.